Good morning, glad to have you with us for worship this day. Just a couple of brief announcements. Don't forget about Bible class following uh, this service. Also, uh, Wednesdays we have Bible class from two to three o'clock. Also, our midweek services, Wednesdays at 4.30 and 6.30.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you the O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a pure and merciful sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve the temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. This your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please. The Old Testament reading from the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter. From Mount Tor, they set out by way, by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading from the letter to the Ephesians, the second chapter. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, 
and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The word of our Lord. according to St. John, the third chapter. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God the Gospel of our Lord. We confess in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God.
as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So far the text. We are in the middle of the Lenten season. In a few weeks, we joyfully celebrate the central event of Christianity, Easter. And what do we celebrate? Is there a phrase or sentence that tells us what Easter is all about? How does God reveal his purpose of Easter? The best term is salvation history. Lent is a season, a time to be open to God. Customs and personal traditions are practiced by people of faith geared to make them more open to God. Special services during the week. Some things may be omitted from the worship service. We may even give up something for the whole season. And the purpose is to be more open to God. Traditions and customs are meant to serve us. A way to be more in touch with the gospel and what it means for the individual. And I am convinced that these traditions and practices can keep us more open to the gospel. But some traditions and practices some people find the whole season of Lent to be a stumbling block. I was reminded of that this past Friday evening. My wife, being raised Roman Catholic, still follows the tradition of no meat on Fridays during Lent. And so this Friday, we had no meat during Lent, which is usually not a problem except for the one time of the year when she makes tuna casserole. I did my penance. Not one of my favorite meals, yet once a year I eat it because my wife enjoys it. And she says, you can eat it once during Lent. And so I do. But why? Why are the, there stumbling blocks for people during a season that is to make us more open for the gospel and more open for our Lord Jesus? Jesus provides the answer. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light. How often do we try to make God operate as we think he should? How often have we tried to place requirements on the way God can come and be with us? How often have churches and individuals closed themselves off to God's rich blessings under the umbrellas of outreach, conversion, and friendliness? Don't misunderstand me. It's important to reach out with the gospel. But the methods, the ways of doing it, must serve the gospel and never dictate how the gospel is proclaimed. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light. There is no gospel without the cross. And it's difficult for us to accept because we all think we're basically good people. We think the things we do are not as bad as the things others do. It's in our nature to make comparisons, comparing ourselves to others. And it occurs many ways in life. We're compared right at the beginning of life. A child is born and the child is compared to a chart to determine health and well-being. 
grandparents compare pictures and exchange abilities of their grandchildren. On the athletic field, abilities between participants are compared. In the classroom, grades are compared. In the workplace, people are compared against one another and perhaps an efficiency chart. The list is endless and it carries over into the church and the life of faith. We compare one another in the living out of faith. Yet if we look to what God reveals to us, all our righteous acts are nothing more than filthy rags. And if we would measure ourselves with the measuring stick used by God, we should all fall into deep despair. Just this past week, I reminded both the day school and public school confirmation classes, never ask God to be fair with you. If you ask God to be fair, you should be very scared because there should be a clap of thunder, a flash of lightning, and a pile of dust where you used to be. That's God's measuring stick. And we wouldn't measure up the way we think we do. But God in wisdom greater than ours brings us to him in a way too wonderful to comprehend. It's Jesus who says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Salvation history reaches a climax over three days. It begins with a cross and apparent death, yet it ends with an empty grave and life. Not just for the Son of God, but for you and me as well. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You and I are saved because God saves us through Christ Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. And the result? Light for our dark world. Light because God provides it. Light provided by God is like the sun coming up this morning. If you're awake to see the sunrise and some of you may have been today since we changed time. You have an understanding of the light God gives. When waiting for the sun to come up, there is a point when you're between darkness and light. Looking to the west, you see darkness. Looking to the east, you see the promise of a new morning. It's the same with the cross. You look at the cross and see the brink of a sunrise. With the cross, there's the promise of Easter, the promise of deliverance, the promise of light, God's light. And Jesus testifies to the meaning of God's light for your life. Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he has done has been done through God. And that's the whole point of salvation history, being saved by God through his son Jesus. And it has effects. It's seen in how we relate to others. People who have certainty of salvation react to life with certainty. Seeing a situation more clearly looking at life and seeing God's hand in it, and returning to God with prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. I'm reminded of that with natural and personal disasters of any type, 
flooding, tornado, fire, illness, injury. Usually, you can divide people into one of two camps. Those who are thankful that they're still alive and those who are completely devastated because life as they know it is gone. Now don't misunderstand me again, it is terrible. It is horrible when life changes dramatically, when people lose everything due to disaster. Even among those who are thankful, who have survived tornado, flood, fire, whatever, there's hurt. The ones who are thankful to be alive, even though they are hurt, look toward the future, knowing that they can get past this ordeal, looking for the sunrise to break through the time of darkness. And only the gift of faith allows us to do that. We look to God because he, we know he brings light to our darkness. We know that God loved the world. We know that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And yet we have to proclaim God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him, that the light of Christ shines day in and day out, not only for us, people of faith, but for the entire world, that God brings more people into the light of his love in Christ Jesus. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God, in these Lenten days, we pray that you would draw us into your light. Expose where we, like your people of old, have thought, spoken, and acted against you. That in repentance we might look to your Son lifted up on the cross for our salvation and be saved from your righteous wrath. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you led your saints by the straight way of faith in your Son until they reached your heavenly city. As we join in their eternal thanksgiving for your steadfast love and wondrous works to the children of men, we pray that you would faithfully lead us to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you love the world by giving your only Son, that whoever believes in him might be saved. We pray that you would bless the work of your church and those called to preach your gospel. By your Spirit, create and sustain living faith within us and all who hear your word, that we may not be condemned, but saved and raised up with Christ to be seated with him in the heavenly places. Lord, in your mercy. O 
God, you have made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We pray that your spirit would be at work within us, that we may not carry out the sinful desires of our bodies and minds, but be your workmanship in Christ Jesus, walking in the good works you have prepared for us to do in him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, you have set our president and our governor as authorities over us for our good. Keep us, we pray, from speaking against them and so against you. Bless and sustain them with all they need to govern us, that we might be ruled wisely and in accord with your will. Continue to watch over those in military service, especially your servants Aaron Best, Daniel Kraft, Sam Farnsworth, Brennan Post, Cody Rodman, Joshua Rotscheit, Johnny Sheppa, Dan Sheely, Troy Willman, and Anthony Zawicki. Grant us peace and protection in our time. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in your shelter your servants, Teresa and Trish Backus, Chandra Barrett, Joe Bauman, Carolyn Bonin, Brooke Delgoff, Bob and Jerry Fultz, Doreen Fuller, Ellen Fuller, Renee Griepentrog, Brad Hefferman, Paul Hiles, Adele Klon, Brandon Krauska, Violet Leonard, Ursula Rhodes, Ron Rogers, Amy Rogenbauer, Lucille Schrader, Shirley C. Hafer, Phyllis Steffick, John Wendt, and all who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Keep them in their day of trouble from falling into faithless fear, and uphold them with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace.